Good morning children. Welcome to Literature Learning. I hope you have gone through all the videos that I sent you uh, on uh, the character, theme, even the trailer of the film on uh, the taming of the shrew. And by now you have already uh, come to know about the characters and the theme and the summary of the story of love and marriage. Now, here we begin from page number 98, the story, the lesson that you have, the taming of the shrew. So let's come to the heading, the taming of the shrew. Now taming, the word is used for animals. We tame animals. We can domesticate animals. So animals can be tamed or trained. Uh, and then the word shrew. Now this word shrew is uh, used for an ill-tempered scolding woman, a woman who is aggressively assertive. Uh, Shakespeare has established for posterity the word shrew as a woman of difficult disposition. It's a woman who is uh, uh, actually shrew is also an animal. Shrew is a, an animal, uh, a nocturnal animal uh, related to the mole family, M-O-L-E, mole family with long pointed snout. So it has got a long pointed uh, snout and uh, it's like a mole. So burrowing animal type, small nocturnal creature. But here in the story, Shrew is taken as a difficult woman, a woman who is always in a fighting mood, a woman who is angry all the time. Most of the time she's angry, ill-tempered woman. So that is what a shrew is. Now let's begin from this paragraph. Catherine the shrew was the eldest daughter of ba ba Baptista, a rich gentleman of Padua. So Catherine is the eldest daughter of Baptista, a rich man. He's a wealthy man. She was a lady of such an ungovernable spirit and a fiery temper. So this lady was of an impossible to govern or control. So she was uh, like uh, easily angered, a fiery tempered, meaning easily angered woman, such a loud uh, tongue to scold. So she was a loud volumed scold. She used to scold others with loud volume. She never felt shy in doing it. That she was known in Padua by no other man than Catherine the Shrew. And therefore in her place where she lived, Padua, she was known as Catherine the Shrew. Why? Because she was a scolding woman. Because she was an ill-tempered woman. And most of the time she was very difficult to be tamed. So uh, it seemed very unlikely, indeed impossible, that any gentleman would ever be found who would venture to marry this lady. So it was like uh, something impossible, near impossible that any gentleman, any person would ever come to marry her because she was of a marriageable age, but nobody would come for her because she was of such an ill-tempered character. And therefore, Baptista was much blamed for differing his consent to many excellent offers that were made to her gentle sister Bianca putting off all Bianca's suitors with this excuse that when the elder sister was fairly off his hand, hands, they should have free leave to address young Bianca. <coughs> Therefore, what happened? Uh, Baptista was much blamed. So Baptista was a father. He was blamed for what? For differing, that is for putting off. Differing means putting off his consent, his permission to many excellent offers that came whose way? Bianca's way. And Bianca is the younger sister of Catherine. Catherine and Bianca, two daughters he had, Baptista had. Catherine and Bianca, two daughters. And the eldest one was ill-tempered, but Bianca was just the opposite. And she was a loved one in Padua. So everyone loved her because she was very meek and mild and by nature very gentle. So all those who came in uh, uh, to, you know, uh, as a suitor for Bianca, 
they were uh, told that please you cannot meet her because unless the eldest daughter is married off was fairly off his hand meaning this is a, a phrase fairly off his hand off whose hand the father's hand meaning she was married or uh, married to someone unless she was married to someone uh, they should have free leave to address young Bianca. So till then they should not come for Bianca. So he he was very particular that unless the elder one is not married, Bianca would never be married. So this was what the uh, father told the suitors. Now you can see here, uh, this is Catherine in a bad temper. You can see her in a bad temper. She's shouting at someone. And now we have here you have, uh, this is Bianca and the father Baptista. In the, this is uh, the scene from the film. So here you have Baptista and this is Bianca. And she's looking at um, the, uh, I mean, the way Catherine is shouting. Now here, uh, Bianca is talking to her father in a nice manner. And here we move on to the next paragraph. It happened, however, that a gentleman named Petruccio came to Padua purposely to look out for a wife. So what happened? Next came Petruccio, a man, a handsome looking guy. He came to Padua looking deliberately, purposely means intentionally, to look for a wife. So he came hunting for a wife. He came to know whether there were good girls in Padua or not. So nothing discouraged by these reports of Catherine's temper and hearing she was rich and handsome, resolved upon marrying this famous termagant and taming her into a meek and manageable wife. So he heard reports about Catherine's temper. He came to know that Catherine is also marriageable age, but he came to know about her temper also, that she was always ill-tempered. And hearing that she was rich and handsome, he resolved, he, uh, you know, made a mind that he is going to marry this famous termagant. So he is going to marry this noisy bully. Termagant means a noise, the noisy bully and taming her into a meek, uh, mild, uh, gentle, manageable wife, a good wife, making her into a good wife. And truly none was so fit to set about this Herculean labor as Patricio. So uh, the writer says that no other person could have done it except Patricio because this was a Herculean labor. That means it was a huge task, a very Herculean task, a very difficult task to put this girl Catherine into her normal self. So whose spirit was as high as Catherine's? Now Petruccio, whose spirit was as high as Catherine. So Petruccio was spirited, highly spirited like Catherine. And he was a witty and most happy-tempered humorist. So Petruccio was a witty man, means a clever, a wise person. And he was happy-tempered humorist. And he was always happy and a humorist, uh, always in good humor. And with all, with all means uh, nevertheless or together with these, he was wise and of such a true judgment. So he was a clever person and he had good judgment that he, uh, he well knew how to feign a passionate and furious deportment. So this boy, this man, he was, uh, he well knew how to Feign. Feign means to pretend. A passionate. A passionate means to affect and uh, uh, to show off that he was uh, and he had a furious deportment behavior. To pretend that he too had a very angry uh, demeanor or behavior. When his spirits were so calm that himself could have laughed merrily at his own angry feigning. So, but he was of a very calm nature, uh, but he were, he and he when he was alone, he used to laugh at his uh, own angry feigning. That is, he is own uh, means made up or pretending manner 
to be angry. So he was uh, laughing in his mind about his own pretensions or pretending to be angry all the time just because he wanted to put uh, Catherine into a uh, uh, kind frame. For his natural temper was careless and easy. But this man was not of that kind. He was his natural temper or his natural character or behavior was of uh, carelessness or easy. Meaning a man going very easy on everything. So he was not very much bothered about what's going on in the world. So the boisterous airs he assumed when he became the husband of Catherine being but in sport. So the boisterous air means the loud noise or the loud way of talking or behaving, he assumed, he pretended, he took it up. Why? Because he wanted to become Catherine's husband, being but in sport. But this was fun. This he took as a merry joke or a fun uh, going. So more properly speaking, affected by his excellent discernment. So more uh, uh, properly speaking means correctly to say, that he was affected due to his ability to be judge or to perceive, uh, to see. So more properly speaking, affected by his excellent discernment, meaning judging the way that if he behaves like this in a particular manner, seriously, and be showing that he is very angry, so he could put Catherine into her uh, good frame. As the only means to overcome in her own way, it should be in his, now this is a printing error, in his own way, the passionate ways, uh, sorry, we just missed out, the passionate way, ways of the future, furious Catherine. So this was a way to overcome, that means to uh, his way of, uh, you know, bringing the passionate, that is the uh, strong emotions or the strong beliefs that uh, the furious, angry Catherine had. Now we move on. You can see here uh, Patricio standing and talking to uh, Catherine and Catherine in a high spirit mood. Now we move on to a quoting then. Patricio went to Catherine the Shrew. So a quoting means to quote, to woo. Quoting is a manner, a way men go and uh, um, show their love to the woman he wants to marry. So, Patricia also went. This was uh, allowed in Western countries. This is allowed. So, they uh, go courting uh, the females they want to marry. So, Patricia went to Catherine the Shrew to court her, to woo her. And first of all, he applied to Baptista, her father, for leave to woo his gentle daughter Catherine. Then he applied, meaning he requested Batista, her father, to give him permission to woo, to court his gentle daughter. He's calling her gentle daughter Catherine. Why? Because he knows she's uh, very loud, boisterous, and she may uh, get angry and furious. He knows that. But purposely, he calls her gentle daughter. You can see it is written in italics. As Patricio called her, this is the way Patricio addressed her, saying archly, that is cunningly, that having heard of a bashful modesty and mild behavior. So what did uh, he say? That he had heard about her bashful, humble modesty, her uh, very nice behavior and mild behavior, gentle behavior. He had come from Verona to solicit her love. So he has come all the way from Verona that is Venice to solicit to get her love. Her father, though he wished her married, was forced to confess Catherine would ill answer this character. So her father was, re he, he wanted uh, Catherine to get married, but still he confessed. He said that he, he, uh, Catherine could be ill-tempered and she may give a very wrong answer also. It being soon apparent of what manner of gentleness she was composed for her music master rushed into the room. Now what happened while they were speaking? At that time, uh, he was telling about Catherine that she is a very gentle lady. So he wants to woo her and taking permission of her father. Meanwhile, what happened? 
uh, it was soon apparent of what manner of gentleness she was composed. So very soon it was going to be revealed. Apparent means it was going to appear of what kind, what manner of gentleness she was composed of, she was made of. For at that very moment, her music master rushed into the room to complain that the gentle Catherine, his pupil, had broken his head with her lute for presuming to find fault with her performance. So the music master came running at that very moment telling that Catherine had broken his head with her lute. Lute is the instrument, musical instrument, which was she was learning from the master, from the music master. And uh, why? For presuming to find fault, for finding fault with her performance. He might have said that you are not playing it properly. So she got angry and hit him uh, with her with her musical instruments instrument. So when Petruccio heard uh, this, he said, "It's a brave wench." So she's a brave wench means woman. I love her more than ever now, and love to have some chat with her. Now I know she is. Uh, I love her more than that, more than what I really loved her, and now I want to talk to her. And hurrying the old gentleman for a positive answer, he said, my business is in haste. And then he wanted to hurry the matter. And so he is told the, where the gentleman was probably hesitant. Why? The father was hesitant because he was afraid. What would Catherine do? So uh, he was afraid. But then he, uh, Patricio told the father, my business is in haste. I have to hurry. Sir Baptista, I cannot come every day to woo and I have no time to come every day to woo uh, Catherine. Here's Catherine and she, you can see, is in an angry temper. Now, the next page. You knew my father. He is dead and has left me heir to all the lands and good. So, uh, Patricio told the Bat Batista, look, you know my father already. He is dead now and he has left all his lands and goods and everything to me. Then tell me, if I get your daughter's love, what dowry will you will give with her? So he is asking, what dowry would you give me if I marry her, if I love her? Baptista thought his manner was somewhat blunt for a lover. So when directly when the boy tells this, any father will be a little annoyed and uh, you know uh, he's he thinks he's a little blunt blunt means very rough in his manners but being glad to Catherine to get Catherine married he answered that he would give her 20,000 crowns for a dowry so when he heard that uh, Patricio is serious about Catherine he answered he said yes he's ready with 20,000 crowns for her dowry so this is the money he is going to give her and half his estate as his death, at his death. So after he dies, half his estate will go to Catherine. So this odd match was quickly addressed, agreed on. So this odd meaning mismatch um, uh, between Patricio and Catherine was agreed on. The father agreed to it and Baptista went to apprise his uh, shrewd daughter of her lover's addresses and sent her in to Patricio to listen to his suit. So Baptista immediately went to apprise. Apprise means to inform, to tell his truest daughter, meaning con his uh, uh, cunning daughter, his uh, uh, daughter here. He is going to tell her that uh, you, you see uh, a handsome guy has come and he is the, your lover. So he is uh, over there. Go and meet him and talk to him and find out whether you would like to get married to that uh, man. So he sent, uh, sent her to Patricio to listen to his suit, to listen to what he is saying. So here we see uh, Catherine the Shrew. This is Elizabeth Taylor playing the role of uh, the Shrew, uh, Catherine. In the meantime, Patricio was settling with himself the mode of courtship he should pursue. So meanwhile, when the father went to call 
uh, Catherine, Patricia was rehearsing how to go for courtship or how to woo Patricia, uh, sorry, how to woo Catherine. I will woo her with some spirit when she comes. And he said to himself, I'll woo her with some spirit, means in an elated manner. And if she rails at me, if she abuses me, shouts at me, why then? I will tell her she sings as sweetly as a nightingale. If she shouts at me, abuses me, then I'll tell her that, see, she sings as sweetly as a nightingale. And if she frowns and if she makes faces at me, I will say she looks as clear as roses new, newly washed with dew. That she is looking like a rose that is was, washed with dew, dew drops. If she will not speak a word, I will praise the eloquence of her language. So she's, uh, he says that if she is going to, uh, I mean, uh, uh, not speak a word, single word, then I will praise her eloquence. Uh, I'll praise her manner in which she is talking, her strong uh, way of expressing and uh, her language. And if she bids me leave her, then again, if she says, come on, get out of here or leave me alone, I will give her thanks as if she bid me stay with her a week, as if she is telling me to stay for a week. So I'll thank her in that manner. Now the stately Catherine entered. And by that time, the stately means the manner Catherine entered was a royal manner. And Patricia first addressed her with good morrow. So uh, Patricia told her, good morning, Kate, for that is your name, I hear. I've come to know that that's your name and good morning to you, dear Kate. Catherine, not liking this plain salutation, said disdainfully. So Catherine did not like the way um, uh, Patricia addressed her uh, this, and said with disdainfully, that it means with a little pride and contempt, she said, they call me Catherine. Who do speak to me? So whoever speaks to me, they call me Catherine. You lie, replied the lover, for you are called plain Kate and bonny Kate and sometimes Kate the shrew. Now you are lying because I heard that you are called plain Kate, only Kate. Your name is only Kate and bonny Kate. And sometimes they call even Cat Kate the shrew. But Kate, you are the prettiest Kate in Christendom. And then he says, he's praising her and saying that you are the prettiest, you are the beauty, most beautiful lady in Christendom, in this uh, Christian world. And therefore, Kate, hearing your mildness praised in every town, and I have heard about your gentle character in all the towns, I am come to woo, woo you for my wife. I have come to uh, quote you or come for courtship uh, to take you as my wife. Now you can see how angry she has become. So she has become very, very angry. A strange courtship they made of it. So it was a strange courtship because uh, Patricia was trying to woo her, whereas uh, Catherine was shouting loud at her. She in a loud and angry terms, you saw the picture, showing him how justly she had gained the name of Shrew. So she said that uh, in a loud manner, she was shouting at him and therefore she demonstrated or showed to everyone that she has got the name very correctly, very justly. So while he still praised her sweet and courteous words and he went on uh, to say that she is very courteous and very praiseworthy, till at length hearing her father coming, he said, then suddenly he heard the father coming and he said, intending to make as quick a wing as possible. So he said, sweet Catherine, let us set this idle chat aside. Catherine, let us uh, keep these uh, arguments or let us keep these idle, wasteful uh, chat talks aside. For your father has consented. Your father has already given the consent that you shall be my wife. So your father has already agreed that you're going to be my wife. Your dowry is agreed on and your dowry has also been fixed. 
and whether you will or no, I will marry you. Whether you are going to marry me or not, I don't know, but I will marry you. Isn't that funny? Now look, he's telling her that whether you marry me or not, I am going to marry you. We come to the next paragraph. And now Baptista entered Patricio, entering. Patricio told him his daughter had received him kindly and that she had promised to be married the next Sunday. So Baptista also very cleverly, what did he say? He told, uh, he came in, when he came in, Patricio cleverly told him that his daughter has already uh, received him very nicely, very, whereas she was shouting at him, no? And that she had promised to be married the next Sunday. Therefore, whereas she had never said this, these words, she has never told him that she wished to marry uh, him on a Sunday. This Catherine denied. Naturally, she shouted and she denied. She said, no, 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 I haven't said anything of this sort saying she would rather see him hanged on Sunday. So Catherine she had, might, might have shouted and said that other than seeing uh, herself married to this fellow, he, she would like to see him hanged on Sunday. So and reproached her father for wishing to wed her to such a madcap ruffian as, uh, as Patricio. So she reproached, she rebuked, she uh, had, uh, told her father that uh, why she, he was wishing to wed her, to marry her off to such a madcap uh, man like, uh, so a foolish man, a foolish bully like Patricio. Patricio desired her father not to regard her angry words. So Patricio told her father, please do not listen to her angry words for they had agreed she should seem reluctant before him. Maybe she is reluctant before the father. But that when they were alone, he had found her very fond and loving. <clears throat> so uh, Patricio told the father that look, don't worry about all that because she has already agreed. And we, when we were alone, she has agreed to marry me. And very fondly, she, lovingly, uh, he said to her, give me your hand, Kate. I will go to Venice to buy you fine apparel against our wedding day. So give me your hand, Kate, because I want to marry you and I want to go to Venice to buy the best dresses for our wedding day. Provide the feast, father, and bid the wedding guests. So he told uh, Baptista to provide the feast, meaning to get ready the feast, to prepare the feast, father, and bid the wedding guest, call the wedding guests. I will be sure to bring rings. And he said he'll be bringing the rings. Fine array, uh, Lord, large uh, uh, number of rich clothes that my Catherine may be fine. And kiss me, Kate, for we will be married on Sunday. So he's telling, I want my Catherine to be dressed up in fine clothes, good clothes, a number of them. And here you can see she's dressed up all looking beautiful. Now, and but she is still in an angry mood. So on the Sunday, all the wedding guests were assembled, but they waited long before Patricio came. So the guests were all ready. They were, everyone had come in. And Catherine also uh, dressed up and waiting for the husband to come or for the groom to come. And he is still not arrived. And Catherine wept for vexation to think that Patricio has only been making a jest of her. So Catherine was wept for vexation to take revenge to think that uh, Patricio had only been making a fun of her. Because he didn't arrive on time and the time has now it's very very late. At last however he appeared. At last when he appeared. He brought none of the bridal finery he had promised Catherine. So along with the, him, he did not bring any bridal dresses, nor was he dressed himself like a, we move on to the next line. You can see here, he's uh, Patricio from the Taming of the Shrew. He's dressed in a typical dress, which is uh, funny because he's dressed in multicolors and you can see the bride she's still angry as a bride also she's angry and shouting at Patricio because he was late so here's you can see the wedding 
and Pat Patricio and uh, Elizabeth Taylor as Catherine. So here in the wedding fineries. The, then uh, he did not come like a bridegroom, but in strange disordered attire, attire or dress that was not at all like a br bridegroom, as if he meant to make a sport of the serious business he came about. So he made a fun, he wore dress a dress that was quite funny and uh, not like a bridegroom's dress, but like a joker's dress. And he came about and his multicolored dress and his servant and the very horses on which they rode were in like manner in mean and fantastic fashion habited. So even his servants and even the animal was dressed up and in fantastic means a fanciful fashion uh, just like uh, the master. All of them was there. I hope you have under uh, till here this page that is page number 99. You have understood this and I hope you have uh, uh, learnt uh, those words also and you love the story. So this is another of Shakespeare's wonderful story, The Taming of the Shrew. Thank you.